while also taking on an exciting new project with Stanford University. Properly functional and intelligent robots made by students. We are not kidding because some student researchers from Google DeepMind and Stanford University have built something amazing. It is called Mobile Aloha. From cooking a delicious three-course meal to cleaning dishes and giving high fives, this robot showcases extreme precision and dexterity that is actually way more accurate than what people have assumed. Today we're here to tell you what it is all about and how it sent shockwaves throughout the robotics industry. But before we begin, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel as we strive to bring the latest and greatest from the world of AI. With that said, let's get straight to business. This initial cooking demonstration of Mobile Aloha was posted on Twitter and took the internet by storm for obvious reasons. Robots haven't been able to do many tasks previously thought to have only been done by humans at a much cheaper scale. It seems like Mobile Aloha is a stepping stone for hardware no longer becoming the bottleneck for achieving human-level generally capable robots. As this video progresses, the demonstrations by this robot become increasingly more intense as the tasks require more precision to imitate human movements. There are videos about it circulating on the internet, and everyone can also read what it is all about since the complete documentation is also available. But looking at this robot as a prospect, one thing is for sure that what is about to come in the near future is truly fascinating. Among the demos, there is a clip in which the robot is being used to make a three-course meal, which, to be honest, is both exciting and frightening at the same time. The video highlights the dexterity and the way in which these robots move, which is more accurate than many people had assumed. We saw something similar last year with NVIDIA's Eureka, but this one is truly fascinating. This robot excels in multitasking, which is visible in how it takes up the cooking work. While cooking, it also completes the side chores like cutting and cleaning to complete the whole kitchen business, unlike many other robots in the market that tend to do one kitchen job. So, let's actually take a look at the team and this entire project to see exactly how they worked and how the whole thing worked out. This team involves Zhang Fu, a Stanford and Air Robotics PhD at Stanford Lab and a student researcher at Google DeepMind. The second member, Tony Z, is also a PhD student at Stanford and a student researcher at Google DeepMind. And the last member is Chelsea Finn, a member of the computing faculty at Stanford and a research scientist at Google DeepMind. Upon initial viewing of the research paper and the abstract, it mentions imitation learning, a process in which robots learn by watching humans do certain kinds of tasks. After learning, the robots then try to mimic those tasks. This technique works wonders for tasks done on a table like picking up objects. But this isn't enough for tasks that need moving around and using the whole body. In this project, they made a system which is an augmentation of the previous Aloha system with a mobile base and a whole body teleoperation interface. This new system, Mobile Aloha, can move around and is designed to control its whole body, giving it more freedom and making it more versatile. In essence, Mobile Aloha gathers data by observing and mimicking human actions. Then the researchers teach it to perform tasks by itself through a process called supervised behavior cloning. The researchers improve its learning by a method called code training, a semi-supervised learning algorithm which trains two learners respectively from two different views and lets the learners label unlabeled examples for each other. The approach is an amalgamation of both the abilities from the previous Aloha project and the new lessons learned by observing and mimicking. By assimilating knowledge from both Aloha and Mobile Aloha, Mobile Aloha excels in activities demanding both manual dexterity and mobility, such as preparing a full meal that involves gathering ingredients, processing them, and cooking on the stove. Consequently, the robot enhances its proficiency, enabling it to perform more intricate tasks compared to learning solely from a single set of examples. Consistently, code training demonstrates superior performance over non-code training approaches. By watching and learning from about 50 examples of each task, the robot gets specialized at doing complex things like cooking shrimp, opening cabinets, using an elevator, and washing dishes. 
The results are evident from numbers, as the robot can get 90% of the tasks done without any hiccups. Not to forget that this level of completion is achieved while ensuring everything is 100% autonomous. Now, before we go further, it is important to mention that we have also seen some examples of task completion, as demonstrated by Google's Palm E. But this one is truly a step forward since it was able to do many of these tasks and some of them weren't even in the original dataset. Such tasks include doing different kinds of actions on chairs, throwing and catching objects, calling elevators, and wiping spilled wine. This robot can move super fast and handle heavy things like pots. Not only that, users can control its arms and the base it moves on at the same time. And what's crazy about this is that it is self-powered, so it has its own battery and computer. For the moving part, they chose a mobile base called Tracer, which is used in warehouses. It's fast, can carry heavy loads, and can move over small obstacles and slopes. It's also cheaper than similar products. The design of this robot makes people feel that they can control it by being connected to it. Users can direct the movement of this robot from point A to point B just by making it follow and using its arms. Now, let's talk about the teleoperation mode. Teleoperation, also known as remote operation, just refers to the operation of a system or a machine from a distance. It's mostly commonly associated with robotics and mobile robots, but it can be applied to a wide range of systems. Teleoperation also has further two categories, i.e. VR teleoperation and standard teleoperation. The primary distinction between VR teleoperation and standard teleoperation lies in the operator's interface and perception of the remote environment. In standard teleoperation, traditional interfaces such as monitors, joysticks, and haptic feedback gloves are employed, providing a 2D or limited 3D view through cameras. Operators rely on visual and haptic cues effective for tasks with good visual perception but limited situational awareness. On the other hand, VR teleoperation utilizes virtual reality headsets to immerse the operator in a 360-degree view of the remote environment, enhancing spatial awareness and task execution. The mobile Aloha robot embodies adaptability, operating in both standard and VR teleoperation modes. In standard mode, mobile Aloha can be controlled remotely using a joystick and monitor setup, suitable for surveillance and inspection. In VR mode, mobile Aloha with a connected VR headset offers telepresence for tasks like bomb disposal or search and rescue, providing improved situational awareness and intuitive control in complex environments. We must also consider the autonomous nature of this product. If scaled correctly, it could find applications in various domains. The continuous evolution of these robots is evident, with ongoing development leading to increased efficiency. As researchers and students delve into the industry, we can anticipate more discoveries that will contribute to faster and more advanced robots. Despite the current bottlenecks, the robot proves impressive, especially in completing tasks with precision. Users can get their hands on it for $32,000. Does this mean we're getting lifetime house help for this amount? Yes, it's true that the robot's ability to adapt, even when faced with adversarial disturbances, indicates it's practically in real-world scenarios. But job displacement is a major concern. As these autonomous robots gain capabilities in various tasks, questions arise about their impact on employment. The whole package has a weight of 75 kilograms with a payload capacity of 5 kilograms per arm. It boasts a battery life of up to 2 hours, providing efficient and sustained operation. In terms of dimensions, the device measures 1.2 meters in length, 0.8 meters in width, and 1.5 meters in height, making it a compact and versatile tool for various applications. Lastly, the Mobile Aloha project is a completely open-source initiative, enhancing both its development trajectory and real-world impact. In terms of development, the decision to open-source both hardware and software components invites contributions from a global community of experts and enthusiasts. This inclusivity accelerates progress by enabling swift bug fixes, code improvements, and the introduction of new features, ultimately expanding the robot's capabilities. Not only that, the accessibility and transparency inherent in open source result in reduced development costs, making the project more sustainable and accessible to smaller research groups or individual developers. With that, we conclude today's video. Subscribe to AI Symbiosis because we bring the latest and greatest updates from the world of AI. We have made another video on an AI that has discovered 800 years worth of materials. It is Google's GNOME. To find out how it discovers millions of materials, click on the video link popping up and we'll see you there in a second. See ya!